Today we're tying a walleye patterned walleye jig. Stay tuned. So I spent some time uh, just thinking about new patterns uh, for this upcoming season. And this is uh, something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Took some time and I airbrushed some, some jigs uh, and I came up with three separate patterns that we've fished all summer long, actually going back maybe uh, into last fall me and a couple guys that, that I fish with pre pretty regularly. Uh, all patterns that seem to work well. And I thought that these three would be a good choice for patterns that I could come out with something new for the uh, 2023 season. The idea behind them themselves, the, the, the general pattern, um, is nothing new. Um, I'm just using an airbrush to paint the walleye jigs, um, in this case, the Barunga heads. And uh, what we're gonna tie today is the walleye head pattern that I th think will do very, very well uh, in terms of retail sales. But we had, we had good success with it um, this whole year. So uh, nothing on video really showing it used, but um, you know, between me and a couple other guys, you know, we've all caught fish on them. One guy fishes mainly a couple of dams here locally. The uh, paint that I'm using is a little bit different than the epoxy paint. Held up great. So what we're going to do is we'll switch over to the vise. And this is the walleye pattern head. And this is a pearl uh, base coat with a gold and black spray pattern and to make this that walleye theme I'm going to start with our size A nylon thread this is unwaxed nylon thread you lock the thread on Walk it back towards the bend of the hook and then back towards the head. For this pattern, we'll start with our black bucktail. Cut our pinch. And this head is a 5 8 So the length of the tail will be the length of the body past the bend of the hook, which in this case is the end of the silver part of our jaws. Just restacking some of these longer hairs. This was a cheaper tail, so there are a couple broken pieces which I'll pull out. going through and finding a couple broken pieces. So we start with our darkest color first. Adjust our pinch until we get the length that we want. Switch our grip. Keep this pinch tight through the whole process. Lock it on with four or five wraps towards the bend of the hook. A couple wraps back towards the head. And just give it a twist, bringing it to the underside. Now this pattern, instead of just a plain black and white, um, using this cream color tail. Now I had found a fairly large bag of these. I didn't know that I had in my collection. And uh, 
they sat for a few years. I, I would use them occasionally. They work great as um, the lighter color in a sandpipe pattern that I would do for myself personally. But for this pattern, it's a little bit nicer than just a straight white. Again, just a pulling out some of those longer fibers. putting my left hand here just so I can see the tips of the black against my finger just so I can see that the cream color uh, is the same length. Again keep this pinch tight for the whole process. And that was four wraps towards the bend of the hook and four wraps towards the head. And as you can see, we have our nice V shaped here, which helps keep the tail locked on. Those hairs will not pull out, but I stop wrapping at this point. And what we're going to uh, use in my collection, I had the uh, antique gold. It's just the larva lace antique gold. And this is kind of like a flashaboo, a very fine uh, flashaboo. I was looking for something more like a crystal flash uh, but this gold was a little bit too red and the larva lace was more of that yellow color to match the uh, the color of the, the paint on the head so today we're going to try the larva lace we'll see how that works this is though I've tied this pattern Without, without the flash material, just so I know that it would look fine. This flash material is a little bit different than what I would use, um, or, or I, the way I'm gonna tie it on is a little bit different than how I would go about tying on flashaboo. So for this, because it's so fine, you're gonna grab a pinch that's fairly sparse. I'm not looking to make a complete tail of this. But I'm going to tie it in along the lateral line. A couple wraps towards the bend of the hook and a couple wraps back towards the head to lock it in. Just trim away extra length. I want it to be about the same length as the tail itself. And I'll try to take a pinch that's an equal size. I think until I get the, um, the bangs, so to speak, of this pack evened up, It'll be a little bit more difficult where I'm, I'm, pick, I'm choosing a pinch at the approximate thickness that I'm looking for um, without actually counting out the fibers like I would do with a flashable. Just lock these into place. A couple wraps towards the bend of the hook. A couple wraps towards the head. And before I proceed, I'm just going to these longest fibers. I don't want anything extending far past the length of this tail um, because um, it's my experience you end up getting a lot of short strikes in that in that sense. Um, but there we have right down the lateral line a little bit low on both sides you can see that the cream color does extend a little bit that might change as we 
um, adjust the black because right now the black looks like it's mostly on one side of the hook point itself but we'll finish that up at the very end so now we can finish our collar wrapping up towards the head taking our wraps back towards the middle of this collar back towards the head and to finish this off We'll make a loop of thread of an opposite color, size A. Wrap toward, back towards the center of the collar, then back to the head. Maybe back a quarter of the way, and then back to the head. Just to create a nice clean collar. this before I finish the collar. It's an exceptionally good looking jig. I really like the colors on this. Uh, one other thing I was going to do, let's finish this before we finish the collar. So we're going to add some stripes just like on a sandpike. these just slightly. Not cutting the hairs, cutting the larva lace. Just so it's the length of the tail. To finish this jig off, we're just going to use our lacquer-based head cement. Thin just slightly so it saturates the threads. Any head cement that gets onto the hair fibers themselves, capillary action, will soak into the hair and then draw that underneath the collar and there we have it walleye pattern walleye jig so if you have any questions on what we did here today go ahead put some comments down below if you have any suggestions on the uh, type of tinsel or another uh, hair color that might uh, really make this jig pop, go ahead and put, put those comments down below as well. As always, like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Feel free to share this material. Keep tying, and until next time, guys, tight lines.